Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the Lemon Tree LT01 Lemon Prime, also known more commonly as the Transformers Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime. Now a massive thank you to Heat Toy for providing me with this early production sample of this particular LT01 and if you are in the market for adding this figure to your collection there will be pre-order links down in the description box below for you to check out. Now getting back here to the figure you can see that this is I believe Lemon Tree's first ever release and if it is, it is for sure a very well done figure. You can see that it looks almost 100% accurate to Optimus Prime's appearance from the Transformers Bumblebee movie. With the market being completely saturated with Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime's, Lemon Tree here really had to do something special in order to stand out from the rest of them. And in my opinion, they definitely have struck gold with this particular figure. And it makes me incredibly eager to see what they have up their sleeves for later releases. Just giving you a very quick 360 degree spin, you can see that in terms of the overall overall proportions as well as the paintwork that has gone into this figure I really do think that they have done a sublime job the figure also does come with a display base which is indeed scene specific to when we see Optimus Prime and the rest of the Autobots go to the launch pad so that is really really awesome and the actual display base too has been painted and sculpted really nicely if we just take a look here at the back of Optimus I think that he cleans up exceptionally well and really really does look fantastic especially for his scale which I'll go into later on in the review as you take a look here at the back you can see that very similarly to the front he is painted impeccably well which is awesome and in all I just think that they've done such an awesome job just removing Optimus here from the display base we do have two magnets here on the base of Prime's feet which do peg into two magnets here on the bottom of the display stand which in my opinion is awesome as it adds that extra sense of stability when displaying the figure on the shelf you can see that the paintwork here even for this launch pad display base I think has come out really nicely with these steps that would lead up to the platform I think that the overall detailing also looks fantastic fantastic so in terms of a display base it's for sure one of the more standouts that I do have in my collection as usually we tend to just get a very small plinth that just has a stand sticking up it but you can see here that they have certainly gone the extra mile and in my opinion this looks really awesome due to the scale this is actually quite small as well so it will go really nicely on a shelf especially if you do have a vast collection of Transformers figures but bringing the Lemon Tree Optimus Prime in here for a closer look and truly appreciating the detailing I think that the head sculpt on this figure here looks fantastic in my opinion it is ever so slightly stylized and better matches his appearance from the War for Cybertron video games as I think that his antennas here are slightly longer than what we saw in the movie however nonetheless everybody is able to tell what particular Optimus Prime this is supposed to be you can see that we've got some fantastic detailing there for the mouth plate and for such a small figure I do think that the detailing on this is truly exquisite I think that they've done such an amazing job even here at the actual top section of Optimus Prime's torso I love all of the mechanical detailing as well as the incredibly vibrant red paint applications that they have indeed used on this figure as we take a look here at the arms once again that same level of paint application as well as detailing continues with some fantastic sculpt work especially here where the smokestacks and the biceps are concerned and as we take a look here at the arms we've got all of that fantastic g1 detailing such as the yellow arrows there and once again i just think that this all looks so awesome he does indeed come with interchangeable hands so at the moment i do have the command hand as well as the gun holding hand i'll show you some of the different options that we can utilize on this figure later on in the review as we take a look look here at the torso once again I think that they've done such a nice job on this you can see all of the fantastic mechanical detailing in there and some amazing red paint applications in order to highlight some of the certain aspects of the sculpt as we take a look here at this front torso I love how they've added this extra piece here to the middle of Optimus Prime's truck windows just to add to the overall level of movie accuracy as we take a look down here to the lower section of the figure and minor critique that I do have with this release is that the thighs do look ever so slightly skinny upon comparing them to the rest of the figure they definitely do appear slightly on the smaller side than compared to say his torso and of course the lower half of the legs however considering the way this figure transforms I honestly do believe that that is a more than enough compromise as we take a look here once again at the sculpting and detailing even on the inside of the legs I once again think that it is fantastic and there for the shins you can see all of that amazing mechanical detailing and I love the weathering effect that we have actually got going on here for the hubcaps and then finally taking a look here at the feet you can see that once again very faithful to what we see in the movie and these are indeed a complete die cast piece so it really does add a great amount of weight to this particular release and there is actually also some die cast here for the torso so these two truck windows here are indeed a complete die cast structure very quickly turning here onto the back just so that we can appreciate once again some of the sculpt and paint application you can see that the back is just as detailed as the front which in my opinion looks amazing and then as we take a look here at the back I think that he does clean up really really nicely no obvious unintended vehicle mode 
unbeatable. So once again, this is indeed very faithful to what we actually got in the movie. And as we just take a look here at the Ion Blaster, I too think that the sculpt work as well as the paint applications on this piece too has also come out really, really well. In terms of articulation for this particular figure, his head here is on a ball joint, so it can look down as well as up to quite a significant degree. It can also tilt side to side and of course rotate the full 360. We do get a full 360 degree rotation here at the arms and these joints are indeed die cast. So it just adds to that extra level of security when actually messing around with the figure so that you don't feel as if though you are going to potentially break the joints seeing as this figure is actually quite small. He does have an extending joint here for the arm so you can see that we can extend this out and that does allow for a greater range of motion outwards. We can also of course hinge this up and down. We can compress this however that is mainly due to transformation. We do get a full 360 degree rotation here at the bicep due to the nature of the transformation. We do have a double joint here at the elbow which once again does allow for a great range of motion which is fantastic. Just pushing the hand back in you can see that the hands are indeed on swivel joints so they can rotate forwards and backwards and whilst on the topic of the hands they are very easily to remove. You can see that once again we do have a peg here and just bringing out one of our alternate prime hands here I have one of the fists you simply just slide them on and you can see how easily it is to slide on and off the hands which is really awesome. I do believe that the original prototype of this particular figure did show him having articulated fingers however seeing as how small this figure actually is I really do think that they perhaps would have been prone to breaking so giving him alternate gestured hands I definitely believe was the right design choice. In terms of the waist we do get a full 360 degree rotation as well as an ab crunch which can rock forwards and backwards mainly due to transformation however can be completely optimized here for robot mode very similarly to that of some of the free zero figures we do actually have a drop down hip so you can see in here that there is actually a second hinge joint so not only do we get the ball joint here but we also get this joint which when utilized does allow you to kick the figure's legs all the way up you can see that that is a fantastic range of motion kicking outwards and of course we can get a very similar range going backwards so that once again is fantastic they can indeed do the splits all the way out to the sides and the actual hip armor can also move out of the way in order to accommodate that. We don't get any form of actual fire rotation. However, there is a rotation here just above the knee. So that here more than makes up for the lack of range of motion for the fire. We do also get a slightly over 90 degree range of motion here at the knee and then turning here to the feet. These are on ball joints so they can actually pivot forwards and backwards as well as rock side to side. And due to transformation, there is actually an independent hinge joint. So utilizing both of them, you really are able to completely hinge the foot all the way in which I think is fantastic. So in terms of articulation and detailing I really do think for such a small piece that it is in my opinion pretty much flawless. Turning to some of the alternate hands you saw earlier on that he does come with a fisted hand as well as a hand that can indeed grip the blaster. Another gesture that he does come with is a slightly relaxed palm however this is only designed to go on this particular arm of Optimus. Unfortunately we don't get a pair in this particular release however this is an early sample so perhaps that could change when this figure does eventually mass release. We do also get another fist here, so we do get a completed set of fists for this particular release. And then finally, we do also get another gun holding hand for this particular arm. And you saw earlier on that we also do get the command hand. So in terms of gestures, I definitely do think that this figure here comes with more than enough. In terms of special features here for our Lemon Tree Prime in his robot mode, he does actually have an LED function, which in my opinion is supposed to replicate the matrix of leadership shining from beneath his chest, which I think is a really nice attention to detail and was something that we didn't see in the movie. So in order to activate this, you're just going to want to lift this section up and you can see in there two very small buttons. Now for this, I will be using a screwdriver as the clearance is incredibly minimal and I don't want to risk stretching the plastic. So you just want to push that there and then come to this side and of course push that side. And then once you do conceal that, you can see that the entire torso there will illuminate in this really awesome, very vibrant blue. And you can see that that does also highlight some of the detailing that we do get there from the translucent plastic, which is indeed movie accurate. We do have detailing actually underneath Optimus Prime's truck windows in the movie and utilizing the LED function, it really does show that detail really nicely, which I think is fantastic. And just giving you one last look at how that looks, a really nice attention to detail. And in my opinion, definitely sets this figure apart here from some of the other third-party Bumblebee movie Optimus Primes. And so throughout the review, you may have heard me continuously referring back to the figure's scale. And that is because this figure here is actually a lot smaller than he does initially look. And that, in my opinion, is just a compliment to the overall design of this particular release, as well as the stellar detail and paint applications. This figure here really does have a lot jam-packed into him, especially considering how small he is. So for some size comparisons, here I have him compared next to the Magic Square Megatron, which is, of course, an incredibly small figure. But you can see that really Optimus Prime here is 
isn't too far off that scale. If I bring in a Studio Series Deluxe class figure, you can see that it is just slightly taller than that of a Studio Series Deluxe. And then moving Magic Square Megatron out of the equation and bringing in our Studio Series Bumblebee movie Blitzwing, you can see that this particular Optimus Prime designed by Lemon Tree is smaller than that of a traditional Studio Series Voyager. So he definitely is more or less a large deluxe class in terms of his scale, which in my opinion puts him in a really odd category as there really isn't any figures that you can have him posed up against. Personally, I don't think that the scale between Prime and Blitzwing looks too off whatsoever. However, Lemon Tree are actually producing an entire range of specifically on the Bumblebee movie figures. So I really do believe that this is only going to scale with their own figures. I know that they are producing a Soundwave as well as a Blitzwing, so I'm really eager to see how those figures come out. So if you are looking to scale with this with some of your Studio Series figures, unfortunately, I don't believe that it is going to work all that well. However, if you're not all that into scale, I'm pretty sure that you can compromise and have this displayed here with some of your other movie figures. But once again, you can just see the amount of detail as well as paint applications that this figure has when compared here next to a Studio Series Deluxe class definitely an awesome figure particularly for its size before we delve into the figures transformation one thing that I did want to point out is that not only have lemon tree utilized the magnets in terms of the display base and the feet but if you don't wish to store the ion blaster in either of Optimus's hands you can actually turn here to the back of the figure and you can see that we do have a magnet here on the back that this here will indeed lock onto so I do believe that there is a magnet situated here at the end of the cannon you simply just want to attach that and you can see that it will clip onto the back there really nice and securely which in my opinion is a fantastic touch especially for a figure of this scale you can see that on the back of him it really does look awesome and it's more or less the look that we do see Optimus Prime pull off when he is indeed storing his blaster on his back so definitely not too far from what we could potentially see in future Bumblebee movies. And with robot mode now completely covered, we can now proceed into the transformation. Surprisingly, for once again such a small figure, the complexity to the conversion is, in my opinion, actually quite sophisticated. This, for me, almost does remind me of the MP10 conversion, although, in my opinion, it is actually slightly more advanced than that of the MP10. So to begin with, you're going to want to turn your attention here to the back. Now, this is an area I know that may perhaps upset many collectors, is that this figure here does unfortunately parts form. However, it is only this entire back section, so you are going to want to just wriggle this piece off and this is the only area that you will need to detach in order to fully transform Prime. Putting him down here you're going to want to take these sections here and just fold those out to the sides to come to these pieces here and also fold them out bring these pieces all the way around to the back, take the peg and also rotate this, and you can set this off to the side for the later steps of the conversion. What I then like to do is take the head here and you're going to want to shift the entire neck all the way to the back. We can then turn our attention here to the arms and you're going to want to take this cavity here and just pop this open. That will then allow you to completely collapse the fist into this cavity and you can see a slot there that this tab will clip nice and securely into, of course. Repeat the same process here for the opposite side. I will be taking my time and being rather delicate with this particular release. As stated throughout the review, this is an early review sample. So although the figure is almost ready for a mass release, I for sure want to be on the safe side and just ensure that I am handling the figure with ease. What you'll then want to do is take the arms here and just slightly shift those to the back. We can then turn our attention to these areas and just hinge those out there to the sides ever so slightly. We can take this entire region here and this is where you're actually going to want to pull the truck doors open as this entire piece is going to swing and will actually slide into this cavity. So you're going to want to collapse that all the way in there, snap that into place, and then we can just completely compress the cab windows there into the chest. You're then going to want to take this section, rotate this here all the way around. So you're just going to want to rotate that there. We can then take this hinge here where the ab crunch was and hinge this section up. With that now done, we can turn our attention here to the underside and this is where you're going to want to take these sections here of the torso and just hinge those down on some double joints. So just once again, hinge this section down, taking your time whilst handling this figure as of course you don't want to accidentally break anything as this figure is quite small in terms of his scale. We're then going to want to take this piece and fold this down. We can then take these sections, rotate those, and you can see that we do have a tab here that is going to peg into this slot. So just according this all in there until that does snap in there nice and flush. And of course, repeat the same process here for the opposite side, so just snap that in there nice and securely. We can once again turn our attention here to the back, so just fold the head down, take these here and ensure that this does stay aligned with this central column. So hold that there and just proceed 
to hinge those out and bring this all the way around. You're then going to want to utilize this double hinge joint here for the elbow and shift all of this all the way up. With that now done, that will then allow you to move these in, which in my opinion definitely does give me MP10 vibes in terms of the nature of the transformation and just ensure that we are left with something that looks along the lines of this. You're once again going to want to ensure here that everything is nice and aligned. Repeat the same process here for the opposite side. So just collapse these areas here on the double hinge joints once again. I am taking my time with this figure as I really do want to potentially break the smokestacks and then just fold those in there also and snap those into place. With that now done, we can take these pieces here and just collapse those down. It may accidentally pull the truck windows forward, so just hold them whilst you do move them. We can take this section here, fold this down, and you can see how that will tab in there. And of course, repeat the same process here for the opposite side. If something does appear as if though it is slightly unaligned, you of course can just hinge that and make sure that everything does tab in. With that now done, you're going to want to take these sections here and they too will also hinge out to the side, so repeat the same process. With the front of the cab now looking something along the lines of this, we may have some discrepancies in terms of how this all aligns. However, once we attach this front section, everything will more or less tab in. We can now turn our attention here to the back ends of the figure. Now, this is where I would really recommend that you be cautious, as although the materials definitely feel as if though they are made from a high grade of plastic, there are still some delicate areas to the transformation due to the overall scale of this figure. There are some rather small and thin clips. So to begin with, you're going to want to take this here and just hinge this out to the side. You can take this knee pad and just fold that in there and snap that nice and securely into place. We can then turn our attention here to the back of the leg, detach this section, and then you're going to want to take this entire piece, fold this out, and this is also on a hinge joint. So this will also rotate down. You can then fold this piece out and rotate that around on the ball joint. And then just flipping to this side, you're going to want to take this piece and shift this all the way up. You can see how things are very easily able to pop off. So just pop that back on there, turn to this section here, hinge this all the way up. And for this piece, you're actually going to want to get this section here sitting over the top of this. So just try your best to hinge the knee down and align this up. You can see that we do have a tab and a slot there on the inside of the fire. So just align this up and once again, snap that nice and securely into place. With that now done, you can take this piece and this will actually shift and situate underneath there so that we are left with something that looks like this. With that now complete, we can turn our attention here to the foot. You're going to want to extend this piece out here on a double hinge joint, rotate it around here at a ball joint, and you can see that we do have a tab on the inside of this foot that will indeed peg into this small slot. So repeat the same process here, just hinge all of this up, utilizing both the ball joint and the hinge joint as showed during the articulation segment. So just hinge all of this up, and just snap that there nice and securely into place. We can then take the shin and collapse that down, come here to this section and ensure that this too is also sitting flush with all of this aligned. This piece here can also align up nice and flush with this piece. And then turning our attention here to this side, we do have a tab here that is going to peg into a slot underneath here on the arm. So just align that up snap that nice and securely into place. And that is basically one side of the cab fully transformed, of course. Repeat the exact same process here on the opposite side. So you're just going to want to hinge that out, fold the knee pad down here, come to the back, hinge this piece out, take this entire section, hinge this down, rotate this out and swivel that. We can then once again, turn our attention to this side, hinge the knee down, lift this all the way up as this is all going to swivel and according over the top. With that now done, you can take this and just hinge that there over the top. You're then going to want to ensure that the tab and the slot here where this gas canister is, is pegged into the fire. So just snap that in there. We can then turn our attention here to the foot, extend this, rotate this around, and very similarly to the opposite side, you're going to want to tab this slot into this peg here. So just shift all of this up, snap that in there, nice and securely collapse this down and of course come to this section collapse this down you can see various different tabs and slots here on the inside so of course this here is all going to align up appropriately once again i'm trying to ensure that i'm not putting all that much pressure here on these shin guards once that's done we can just hinge all of this up and you can see that tab that will peg into the slot under there so just snap that into place and that is effectively the transformation for optimus prime's main cab fully completed we can now bring in this area which unfortunately once again is the area of parts forming and we do have a massive peg here on the back that is of course going to peg into this slot so you're just going to want to cap that 
there over. This is more fiddly than anything because of course you have to ensure that all of the panels are aligned up appropriately otherwise it will not go in there whatsoever. So just hinge this tab up slightly so that we have a little bit more clearance. Slide that in there and then just compress. You can see that we do have some tabs and some slots to so ensure that those are all aligned up appropriately. Of course, repeat the same process. And then with here, you can see that we do have a slight hook. This is actually going to want to go underneath the fender and will clip into place. So just hinge this under here and snap that in there. And you can see that will clip in there really nice and securely. Of course, come here to this side and repeat the same process. Of course, this is probably going to be slightly harder to do which is unfortunate i do recommend bringing in a flat nosed screwdriver just to support in here as we don't have anything here for this to actually rest on so if you put this under there and just apply pressure here to the front it will prevent this area here from breaking and should allow this to tab in a lot more securely than it was earlier on however of course you do have to ensure that everything is aligned up so just support that there snap that nice and securely into place and then it is just a matter of compressing all that in and with the entire front section of the cab now fully tabbed in here we have our lemon prime fully transformed up into what is in my opinion a really awesome looking truck mode and so now taking a look here at lemon prime in his truck mode personally i think that lemon tree have done a fantastic job in getting what is in my opinion an incredibly accurate looking robot mode into a equally as accurate looking truck mode this really does look like the truck that we see towards the end of the transfer was Bumblebee movie very G1 Optimus Prime in terms of its overall design and I think that this figure here looks absolutely fantastic especially for its scale I keep continuously referring back to this figure scale as I'm just absolutely blown away with the level of complexity to the conversion for such a small figure as we take a look here at the entire front section of the grill I think that this looks incredibly realistic the paint applications are also just as good as the overall sculpt work in my opinion you can see that we've got the incredibly reflective windows there which are indeed see-through the silver window wipers as well as the really awesome weathered side view mirrors I think that this here all looks fantastic very vibrant red there for the side as well as the silver stripe we do have some nice detailing once again in here for the hubcaps as well as the silver gas canisters as we turn here to the back it doesn't look all that bad personally we unfortunately don't get any trailer hitch so this won't be compatible with any trailers from any other brands I was hoping that perhaps it would be compatible to that of the Magic Square Optimus Prime trailer however considering this figure's scale I don't think that that would have looked too right whatsoever you can see here that i think that this entire region here also looks really nice with the smokestacks there and the detailing as well as the weathering effect on these in my opinion has also come out really nicely and then as we just take a look here at the opposite side you can see that it's equally as clean looking as the other side really really awesome looking figure and then as we take a look here at the underside he does clean up really really well something also worth noting is that he does indeed have rubber tires which is something that we don't really even see on some of our masterpiece figures which in my opinion is really awesome you can collapse these smokestacks down here ever so slightly so for robot mode they are supposed to be hinged upwards however for vehicle mode you can slightly collapse them down however it is very minimal in terms of the change he does roll rather well not as well as I would have hoped however as stated this is an early production sample so the tolerances I definitely do believe may slightly change when this figure does eventually release at mass retail so in all a fantastic looking figure really a massive well done here to lemon tree for some size comparisons unfortunately I don't have a whole lot to actually compare this figure to here we have the earthrise deluxe class wheeljack and you can see that more or less they are exactly the same in terms of their overall scale so that is amazing you can tell the engineering of this wheeljack is incredibly simplistic and to get a figure that looks this good out of this lemon tree prime with a significant increase to the complexity to the conversion in my opinion is mind-blowing i know that there is a substantial price difference but it always amazes me how these companies can make these rather small figures transform and convert in a very complex way and result in equal as good looking robot modes and as good looking vehicle modes for another size comparison here I have a micro master just there for a very quick comparison so in all a really really nice looking figure of course I don't think that he's going to scale with pretty much any of the mainline figures and there are no third party figures that I can suggest that he may scale with maybe some of the magic square figures however you saw when compared next to the MS Megatron he is definitely way too tall however for some of the seekers I think that he may fit in there rather nicely so definitely a very awesome figure here and 
And so some final thoughts here for the Lemon Tree LT01 Lemon Prime. I think that this figure here is really remarkable, particularly for its scale. I continuously keep referring back to the size of this figure as he is a lot smaller than I and many others actually initially believed him to be. I was really shocked to see him being slightly bigger than that of our now traditional deluxe class. But the complexity to the conversion I definitely think is astounding for a first release by Lemon Tree. They have for sure left me with a very good impression of what their company is able to do. I'm incredibly excited to see some of their future releases. In terms of robot mode, I do believe him to be pretty much flawless. The paintwork on this figure really is fantastic and turning to the details as well as the accuracy to the movie, I really do think that this figure is almost completely faultless. There are some minor critiques that I do have in terms of the proportions where the head is concerned as well as the thighs. However, as stated, they are only very minor and are critiques that I am easily able to overlook. I think that for his size, the articulation too is really nice. I love the look of the display base here. I think that this here is genius and looks amazing. I really do hope that we get one of these with some of their future releases. It does appear as if though we will as there are various different tabs on this as well as slots. So it'll be awesome to have these all interconnect. And I do know that they are actually producing a Bumblebee movie inspired Ironhide. So I'm really eager to see how that figure turns out. Transformation as stated before, despite the entire aspect concerning the parts forming here to the front grille, I do think that the transformation is incredibly satisfying. It definitely does remind me of some of the more sophisticated Takara Tomy masterpieces. So that once again is also a really nice experience. And then as we get him into truck mode, I do also think that this is equally as good as the robot mode. Definitely a very faithful look to his appearance towards the ending of the Bumblebee movie. And in all, this is a figure that I can highly recommend. So with all that being said, once again, a huge thank you to Heat Toy for providing me with this early review sample. And if you are in the market for adding this fantastic figure to your collection and what will be a fantastic lineup in my opinion, he is soon to be available and in stock right now. So for that, I will leave a link down in the description box below to both a direct listing here to the Lemon Tree Prime as well as a direct link to that of Heat Toy's front main page. I thank you all so much for checking this review out. If you did enjoy the review, please do let me know down in the comment section below. Also, be sure to let me know your thoughts on this particular Lemon Tree Prime and whether or not you will indeed be adding him to the collection. I thank you all for watching and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.